Today's top news segment of What's Up in Makeup is quite unique in that the top story, the first story we're going to talk about is so bad. It is so bad. There are some things going on over at Beauty Counter, and I would not know any of this if it hadn't been for three people who used to work for Beauty Counter contacted me privately to tell me their stories. It's horrible. I will tell you everything I know about the situation there. And then because that one is pretty heavy, we'll lighten it up a little bit about a story about Elf Cosmetics and who they're now sponsoring. And then jump into a story that's a bit heavier about something really awful that happened on a brand trip. And we're going to kind of go back and forth like that until the very end when we get to a very, very funny, very, very well done commercial by Sarah V. If you remember, they did the Super Bowl commercial with Michael Sarah, and it was hilarious. They drug it on a little too long, if I'm going to be honest, but it, it was really good. They're trying to carry that on with a promotion for sunscreen. You don't want to miss that. So hang tight. We're about to jump into all of it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, top news where we talk about everything that happened across the beauty industry all in one place. Before we get started, just a quick mention that our sponsor for today's episode is Nira. I highly recommend you go over to their website and check out their cutting edge technology that is clinically proven to reduce wrinkles. I've been using my Nira for a very long time and seen some beautiful results. You can also use my code for 15% off of your order. And with that being said, let's get into this beauty counter stuff. It's bad. It's really bad. I just realized I'm a little low in the frame. Let me, let me roll this up a little bit. Feel short. Okay, that's bad. My research for this story started off very simply. I literally thought it was going to be like two minute blurb. <laughs> <laughs> what's up in makeup. It's like beauty counter. I don't buy from beauty counter because they're an MLM. I know a lot of you don't buy from beauty counter. So I was like, it's just going to be a little blurb. I found this article and it said that beauty counter had been in foreclosure and that it was purchased. Okay, fine, cut and dry. But I am not going to tell the story from the public facing point of view because I feel like the most important story here are the people who were affected by the choices that the people at Beauty Counter made. If you are not familiar, Beauty Counter is a multi-level marketing company that started in 2013. They had year over year growth for a very long time, mostly due to their early adopting of clean beauty rhetoric. According to the publication Beauty Packaging, they were the first company to create a never list of 2,800 what they called questionable or harmful ingredients that would never be used in their products. And in demonizing their competitors, they gave themselves a huge edge. In April of 2021, the Carlisle Group acquired a majority share in Beauty Counter valued at $1 billion. In 2022, news outlets published that their founder and CEO, her name is Greg Renfrew, that she had stepped down as CEO. But the biggest move, and I think where a lot of us really started looking at Beauty Counter, was when they went into Ulta, and that happened in March of 2023. Some things happened behind the scenes that we'll get into a little bit more later, but what you need to know now is that Greg did return to her position as CEO in January of 2024. But this past week, just a few days ago, things really went down over at Beauty Counter. And I am thinking, I don't have the exact numbers, but thousands, if not tens of thousands of people were affected. On Wednesday, Beauty Counter contacted their MLM reps. So the people that were selling Beauty Counter the way that someone might sell Mary Kay or Avon, they call them brand advocates. They were all fired. I have never heard of people in an MLM being fired. They were fired. I'll put the full email on the screen and the link to the source for this down below. But in short, this is what it said. This email constitutes written notice of the termination of your brand advocate agreement with Counter Brands LLC, which is the LLC that owns Beauty Counter. The date shows that it was effective 
immediately. They'll be paid on or about April 26th, and then it explains that the sales reps will receive commission payments through that termination date, but will have no further rights to any bonuses, commissions, or other compensation following the termination date. They should no longer say that they are affiliated with Beauty Counter in any way and are reminded that they are bound by, quote, all post-termination obligations under the brand advocate agreement, including confidentiality obligations. And then I started looking for something else. I was actually looking for a picture of Greg Renfrew to put in WhatsApp and makeup, just so you knew what she looked like. And I found her personal Instagram. It is public, but it's not the beauty counter page. It's hers. And a lot of brand owners have that. And the comments on this page are next level. I It broke my heart. Here is Greg's last post that she put up on April 1st, and the caption says, need a little reminder? Yes, you. You women can and will be the ones to change the world. In context now, a few weeks later, in that Greg has now fired, I don't know how many of the women MLM reps that worked for her company, it's just not, it's not a good look. One of the commenters said, you certainly changed my world when you mass fired myself and thousands of other loyal BC consultants via email last night without notice. How many women, including single mothers and women of color, depend on the income from the company we proudly represented for years? You have quite literally taken livelihood away from my family without explanation. Thousands of dollars without warning or justification. But keep posting about your bold moves on Instagram. I guess ruin the lives of thousands of women is considered bold, but there's no honor in it whatsoever. This is disgusting. In response to her comment, this person who had written that said, it came out of nowhere for no explanation. I had over 2,000 clients. This is devastating. So this is where the public stuff ends and where the private conversations that I had with former employees of Beauty Counter starts. Now, these all three of these people worked on the corporate side of Beauty Counter, not the MLM part. They were not individual reps, but they actually worked at corporate. Of course, I cannot 100% verify that the emails came from these people. Based on the conversations that we've had and the information that they knew, I have no reason reason to believe that they are not who they say they are. I'm changing all of their names to protect them. So let's talk about the first person, her name, we're going to call her Nancy. And what she did was she gave me some background into why she believes everything fell apart at Beauty Counter. So remember when we were talking about how in 2021, the Carlisle Group bought a majority stake in Beauty Counter for a billion dollars. And then how recently, you know, the news articles were saying that they were in foreclosure. So how do they go from this billion dollar investment to foreclosure in three years? Nancy has some theories. And this is just a quick reminder that I have no way to verify what Nancy is saying to me, but I do think it is important that you hear what she has to say. So she says that their founder, Greg, was ousted from the company in 2022 rather than the public friendly stepping down as CEO. And then she was replaced by a woman named Mindy McKenzie. And Mindy McKenzie had worked for the Carlisle Group. So what I gather from Nancy's perspective is that Mindy didn't have have any experience as a CEO, as managing a full business. What she was was more of a motivational speaker. So what she thinks is that the Carlisle Group brought in Mindy in order to encourage and try to increase sales in the MLM arm of the company. Because what had happened is by 2022, the boom of cosmetic sales that was happening in 2020 was now slowing down. And then it got even worse when they went into Ulta stores because what are you going to choose? to do? Are you going to hunt down a rep to buy your beauty counter stuff from them? Or are you just going to go on the Ulta website and order it and earn your Ulta points and all of that? Most people seem to be moving away from using reps and just going to the Ulta website to purchase, which made the MLM sales go down even further. So Nancy was basically saying it wasn't the rep's fault 
that sales were down. It was the choices of company that were making things slow down along with just the natural downturn of cosmetic sales after the pandemic ended. That brings us to our second person and we are going to call her Chelsea. So Chelsea gave me some insight into a man named Mark Ray. Around the same time that Nancy says Greg was ousted and Mindy was hired, they also hired Mark as the chief financial officer. Mark was in charge of setting up the a deal with Ulta and getting all of that going. But what he also did was he led Ulta to believe and he led investors to believe that they would have around $34 million in sales from Ulta in that one year. And Chelsea, looking at these numbers, was like, I don't know if that's going to happen because the competition at Ulta is steep and we were also post-pandemic and beauty sales were down. So did Mark hit his numbers? No, he absolutely did not. According to Chelsea, he missed them by a lot. She asked me to not say the exact number, but it was by a lot. They still sold quite a bit of product though, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like it was a big flop. It was just not $34 million. <laughs> So in June of 2023, a few months after the launch at Ulta, Mark, uh, they said he decided to part ways with the company, but Chelsea led me to believe that he was fired. Hello, editing Jen here. I realized I got some things wrong with my timeline. It's really not too important to the overall story, really, but I wanted to correct some dates. Here's what I just learned. So Greg Renfrew left as CEO of Beauty Counter in January of 2023. We've got that. So then she was replaced by Mark Ray as CEO, not CFO. So Mark Ray was CEO. He worked on the deal with Ulta, and then he left in June of 2023 after the Ulta deal didn't go as well as they had hoped. And that's when Mindy McKenzie came on in June of 2023. So I just got it a little mixed up there and I just wanted to make sure that I had it right. Now that we're all caught up, back to the video. Going back to Nancy, she said that they were also having other struggles building up their MLM arm. They supposedly have this big conference, costs about $4 million for this conference in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a recruitment slash engagement event. And that event usually, you know, gets them more reps and, you know, gets them more sales and all of that. She said it didn't move the needle for them at all. Now let us go to the third person that contacted me. We're going to call her Alexis. And Alexis basically confirmed to me everything that Nancy and Chelsea had already said, especially about not meeting the sales goals at Ulta and the MLM arm just not performing the way that it used to. And Alexis said because of that, they started laying people off. But what Alexis and Nancy and Chelsea didn't know was that it was going to get so, so so much worse. They were all on this call on Wednesday, along with a bunch of other people who worked for the corporate arm of the company. And Nancy, being the smart person that she is, she recorded it and she transcribed it for me. And it is absolutely awful. I cannot imagine what it was like for them and the other people that were on that call to hear this because the kicker was is that they were not allowed to talk, they were not allowed to ask questions, they just had to listen. I'm going to put Nancy's full transcription up on the screen for you to read it. I will tell you my jaw was on the freaking floor. I know that a lot of you that watch What's Up in Makeup don't look at the screen while you're listening, so I am going to read some main points for you, but please feel free to pause if you'd like to read the whole thing. This is the way the meeting began. Beauty counter ran out of runway. Over the last several months, the board, myself, and others worked diligently and explored many options, including the potential sale of the business to others or refinancing the debt that had been placed on the business to avoid one winding down the operations of the company. Today, um, I need to tell you that the current beauty counter business, in other words, what is known as Counter Brands LLC, is winding down. And then she goes on to say that there was a lot of debt placed on Beauty Counter when the Carlisle Group bought the company and its lenders have foreclosed on pretty much all of the assets of Counter Brands, requiring them to sell their assets that will be purchased by a new corporate entity. The new investors will then fund the new company. And according to Nancy, at this point, Greg Renfrew, the CEO, began to cry, obviously upset because this is a difficult meeting to have to 
conduct. I can I can't imagine that I wouldn't cry in that particular situation. Nancy said she continued by saying with deep regret as part of this process Counterbrands LLC needs to permanently terminate the employment of all associates. Some associates are expected to receive offers to join efforts to relaunch the new brand in the coming weeks under a new entity and new ownership structure. There are funding and other constraints that need to be taken into account. As the founder, I just want you all to know I have the utmost respect for each of you, and I sincerely thank you for your hard work and commitment to the mission. The new entity, which will relaunch Beauty Counter in the coming weeks, will allow Beauty Counter's powerful mission to continue. But it is with deep regret that I have to inform you of the place we are in today, and I just want to thank you all for your services, your commitment, and your hard work. What this means for each of you on this call is that your last day of employment with Counterbrands will begin tomorrow, April 18th. And then she tells them that their access to Counterbrand systems are immediately turned off and starting now they shouldn't communicate on behalf of Counterbrands and that their last day of pay would be tomorrow. Yes, you heard me right. They were given one day's notice, according to Nancy and Alexis and Chelsea. I'm sorry, but what? One day's notice. So Nancy had said at this point that Greg had stopped crying, but then she began crying again when she continued with, as the founder and now once again CEO, I just want you all to know, I do not take this lightly. Every business, including this business, is built with people at its heart, and there's nothing more for me that I hate than this outcome. And I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for everything you all have done for your contributions of counterbrands. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. And then the meeting ended. You know, people don't reach out to me very often when it comes to these kinds of situations. And what I've learned is that when people do reach out to me, it's because they're really, really pissed off. And I think that if it was just the one day notice, I'm not sure if Alexis and Nancy and Chelsea would have contacted me. But it's more than the one day's notice. It's actually worse. The new corporate investor that Greg was talking about was herself. She's the one who bought Beauty Counter out of foreclosure. A public press statement for the Carlyle Group, which remember is the outgoing majority stakeholder in Beauty Counter, said that they tried to keep the brand afloat. They said that their efforts to increase sales by increasing marketing spend, focusing on innovation to broaden the product portfolio, and increasing the number of ways consumers could get their products were their strategies. However, quote, the business continued to lose ground. It seems like the Carlyle Group just didn't see their return on investment and didn't see it improving anytime soon, so they sold it back to Greg Renfrew. The public statement says, quote, in the best interest of all parties and ensured business continuity. So Nancy and Alexis and Chelsea did not know in this meeting where Greg was crying and upset that she was actually the one that was going to continue the company and she was the one making the firing choices. And it seemed like to them, she was the one who had decided that they were only going to get one day notice of their firing. But believe it or not, it gets even worse. I know it does. It's, it's, so, it's horrible. I told you it's horrible. That's why I'm dedicating so much time to the story. It's terrible. According to Alexis and Nancy and Chelsea, who had been working for this company for a long time, they didn't get any severance pay. Nothing. Just tomorrow, after tomorrow, you just don't have a job anymore and you're not going to make any more money. That's the that's the end of it. And along with that, they're losing their health benefits. So they had health benefits, of course, through Beauty Counter. And typically that is covered in the United States by a program called COBRA. And what COBRA does is it allows people to keep their health insurance when they're in situations like this. But because that company, Counter Brands, is going out of business, they won't qualify for COBRA. So they will have no health insurance. And if you don't live in the United States, this is a huge deal to not have health insurance, especially if you have people on your policy that have regular doctor's visits or regular prescriptions, because you now have to figure out how you're going to pay for that. Alexis told me that the only way she found out that Greg Renfrew had purchased Beauty Counter from the Carlisle Group was through public press releases. They didn't even tell her. Chelsea built on what Alexis said, saying to me, quote, throughout our time with Beauty Counter, the executive team continuously misled us. They assured us that financial issues were not a concern, yet many of us experienced delayed reimbursements for expenses. If you go over to the Beauty Counter website right now, at least as of the time of filming, there is a landing page. There is 
there's no customer service email address. The only way I knew how to contact Beauty Counter to ask for a statement was through Instagram DM. So I did do that, but I want to be clear, I did that on Friday night after business hours because I was scrambling to get this done late on Friday. So the fact that they have not gotten back to me is most likely not their fault, except for the fact that there was no customer service email <laughs> available for me to try to reach out that way as well. But I do want to let you know I did reach out for comment and I have not heard back. So back to the landing page, this is what it says. It says, Beauty Counter Community, thanks for coming to visit. The Beauty Counter business that you previ knew previously has wound down. However, I'm excited to share the news that I am creating a new company that will allow us to sell the products you know and love, pushing forward the important mission of making the industry and our world safer and healthier. A new Beauty Counter is on its way. As we get the new company up and running, we are taking a short pause to build for the future and most importantly, to serve you all. Thank you for being a part of our community and movement. We will see you again in early May. More to come, Greg. And according to Alexis, the new beauty counter is set to launch on May 1st. And in the press releases, they said that Greg Renfrew is going to be able to hold on to all of the formulas and everything for beauty counters, so the product should not change. One more point that I want to make is that contrary to what I saw on the internet, meaning that email that was sent to the MLM beauty advocates and also the comments next to Greg's post on Instagram, the public press release says that Beauty Counter will retain the vast majority of its direct sales associates. So I don't know how many direct sales associates got that letter, if it was all of them, if it was just some of them, how many of those direct sales associates will still be able to work for the company, but there is definitely a selection of them that have been officially fired. I do wonder if the representatives will be rehired once it switches over and the brand website opens up again in May. Before we wrap this up, I just want to send out my heartfelt just sadness, and I am so sorry that this has happened to the people that have worked at Beauty Counter. I just, I'm absolutely devastated for you, and you should have had more notice. That is not okay for them to give you one day's notice and then just cut your job off like that. That is tactless and awful, and that Greg didn't have the guts to tell you that she was the one who had purchased the company to look you in the eye and say, look, I had to make some tough decisions. The company's not doing well. I am purchasing the brand and I have to let some people go. I just can't afford it. And just been honest and just straight up said that. I don't know why Greg Renfrew chose to do what she did in that meeting and to not just be open and transparent about her being the one who was purchasing Beauty Counter. But I do feel that not giving giving them any severance or notice is absolutely inexcusable. Not giving people who you have tried to empower, women, yay, you know, small business, yay, sell my products, yay, and people that have built their whole businesses, their whole job on the MLM arm of things, and then just to cut all of that off for them. These people that are just trying to put food on the table for their families and give them zero notice, disgusting absolutely disgusting. So I, so again, I just want to say I'm so sorry to everybody involved and everyone that was affected by this. And I hope that you were able to get everything sorted out, new jobs, better jobs, better things in the future for you. And I can't imagine what you're going through right now, but please know that my heart is with you. And I hope that me telling the story and talking about what happened from your point of view, at least lets you know that we know and we're behind you 100%. Whew. I'm emotional over that one. I am, I'm very emotional. So I need to take a little mental break and talk about something that's a little more lighthearted. So let's talk about race car driving. <laughs> Let's talk about something that is happy, and it's women in sports, women in motorsports specifically. And we've seen some of these beauty sponsorships come across What's Been Makeup over the past few months. We had Anastasia Beverly Hills and also Charlotte Tilbury sp sponsoring race car drivers. Charlotte Tilbury is sponsored Formula One Academy driver Lola Lovenfoss, and Anastasia Beverly Hills sponsored Formula One Academy alumni and Formula Four driver Bianca Bustamante. And now Elf Cosmetics is taking it to the next level. 
literally. They are sponsoring professional driver Catherine Legg in the Indianapolis 500 as their first beauty sponsor in history. Last year, Catherine set the fastest one lap and four lap qualification speeds for a female driver in the history of the Indy 500. She became the ninth woman to qualify to race in the Indy 500 in 2012, and she's the only woman driving in the 2024 race. She'll be behind the wheel of the number 51 Elf Honda Delara race car decked out in the brand's logo and a pink and red wrap. Catherine did say in in a statement, quote, Elf is truly changing the face of motorsports by lifting women up and challenging norms. When I was nine years old, I decided I wanted to be a race car driver, and I never would have dreamed a beauty brand would one day be my primary sponsor for the Indy 500. Catherine also explained that bringing together Dan Cohn Racing, Honda, and Elf will forge a new path for not only women in sports, but women globally that are, quote, breaking barriers, pushing boundaries, and testing the limits by giving them the confidence and path towards realizing their dreams whatever they may be. I'm a yay sports kind of person. I don't watch motorsports, but yay, Catherine, go elf, go sports, drive fast. How'd I do? <laughs> so that was your palate cleanser before we get into something else that people are really upset about. It just really depends on your perspective on a brand selling, whether you're going to be upset about this or not, especially a Black-owned beauty brand. So Mented has been sold. Uh, we knew that Mented was having issues. We knew something was going on for months, especially when Beauty Bakery closed down. Y'all were saying in my comments, Beauty Bakery's closed down and Mented, nothing is stocked. I go into my Target, I go into my Ulta, and there's no products on the shelves. There's nothing on their website. Something is definitely going on. They haven't posted posted since early January on Instagram. And yes, something was definitely going on. We have an update from their founder. Her name is KJ. Here is the Instagram post that she put up on Friday. Again, please pause to read the whole thing. Here is the summary. It starts off by thanking customers for their support and then goes on to say, it is with immense joy and gratitude that I share some exciting news with you all today. Mented Cosmetics is embarking on a new chapter, one filled with fresh opportunities, renewed energy, and boundless potential. I am thrilled to announce that the Mented brand was acquired by West Lane Capital Partners and will be joining the Blooming Brands Profile, a West Lane subsidiary. The partnership promises to elevate our brand to new heights and ensure that Mented continues to thrive for years to come. And I heard Blooming Brands. I was like, Blooming Brands? That sounds really familiar. Do you remember like three weeks ago, there was a company called Bloom that we had talked about that was new to Ulta and it was products that had flowers floating in them, that's Blooming Brands. They also own By Blossom Skincare and Blue Cross Nail Salon products. That's the company that bought Mented. So KJ continued in her post, quote, while we may have faced some business challenges along the way, I want to reassure you that our commitment to delivering high quality, inclusive beauty products has never wavered. With the Blooming Brands team by our side, we are more determined than ever to fulfill our promise of offering cosmetics that celebrate and empower every shade of beauty. And the relaunch of Mented will be this summer. When Sharon Shooter left I'm a Beauty and when Beauty Bay shut down. Of course, there is a level of happiness for the owners that they are moving on to do what they need to do for their lives. But then there's a level of sadness in that these Black-owned beauty brands are no longer going to be Black-owned. KJ was kind enough to respond to quite a few comments on her post. So for example, she said on a post of, that was disappointed about this, she says, hi, totally understand how you feel. Please know we aren't changing our formulas or ingredients. And this partnership is what's allowing men to to reopen our doors for the community we love. And then she said, I'm KJ, still here leading the charge. We'll do an IG Live soon to address more of these concerns in the upcoming weeks. And then later she posted, I'm staying on to help guide the brand through the relaunch. So that leads me to believe that she may just be on for a period of time until the new owners get their footing to make sure that everything is good before she leaves the company. 
Now, she didn't say that specifically, but just the wording to help guide the brand through the relaunch makes it sound like she will leave eventually. The biggest concern from customers in the comments seems to be concerns about the formulas changing, and KJ has been adamant to say over and over again that the formulas will not change. So if that was something you were concerned about, KJ is saying that it is not going to happen. And in the end, I feel the same way. I do wish KJ all the best. It sounds like she's doing what is best for her, which is wonderful for her. We wouldn't have a Mented Cosmetics if it weren't for KJ. So I wish her all the best. I am still sad to see another Black-owned beauty brand that is no longer going to be Black-owned because I know that means so much to so many people. Okay, so, so now we're flipping back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this. We're flipping back and forth. Let's talk beauty trends. Let's let's lighten it up a little bit. And then I've got another serious one for you. So let's let's get some levity here. Six biggest beauty trends of summer 2024 was announced by Nylon Magazine. Uh, and they're, in they're very interesting. Uh, I don't know how many of them I will be participating in, but I would love to know what you think about these. So the first one is liquid silver eyeshadow, but it doesn't have to be metallic. It could be like a satiny finish or a glittery finish, just any kind of metallic. And it doesn't even have to be silver. It could be copper or gold or whatever. Just a metallic shine is supposed to be very much on trend this summer. Also, grayish lips. <laughs> grayish lips. I know that it's a very polarizing topic, grayish lips, because it can kind of make you look like you're no longer alive. So what the editors of Nylon suggested was to put like some kind of mauve toned lip liner or a lip liner that's a bit more warm toned on the outside and then the grayish in the middle to kind of soften it a little bit. Number three flips it to some traditional warmth. We have sun-kissed bronzer, of course. Isn't that on trend every single summer? <laughs> I feel like it is. Number four, I'm very excited about because usually they talk about blue in this spot, but they're switching it to green. And I have never gotten so many compliments as I've been getting lately wearing green. So I'm very happy that green is very much on trend this summer. I will be rocking my green. Number five is double eyeliner. And the way they're saying that we're gonna rock this is we're gonna do the top wing like we normally do, but then also do a little bit of a bottom wing to kind of create almost like a two prong fork kind of situation going going on on the side. And according to Nylon, it is pop star approved. So take that for what that is. <laughs> And finally, another trend that I absolutely love, really happy about this one, is extremely glossy, shiny lip gloss. I do think a very shiny lip is gorgeous on anybody. I, I love that look. So I'm happy to see glossy lips being on trend. Now, that being said, do, do you need to follow the trends? No, absolutely not. I just thought this was interesting that these are the trends. And then at this point, we get to adopt them or not. So I would love to know what you think of these trends down in the comment section down below. So apparently there was some drama on a recent brand trip and it had nothing to do with influencers on a private jet singing a Fergie song while they sipped champagne. It had nothing to do with infighting on the trip. It had to do with how the influencers were treated at a place that they visited that was part of the trip. Black-owned skincare brand Topical said the brand trip attended by black and brown creators from the UK and US traveled to the French Alps and experienced racism and Islamophobia. Content creator Nella Rose shared her story on Instagram. The capture of the story is from a page called Melanin Besties Unite. I want Nella to be able to tell her story to you, so I'll play the clip. Well, I don't understand <laughs> We just called the police, they are coming. You're gonna spend a good time at the police station. Alright guys, quick story time. So we're on a brand trip, there's like 20 black people. We decided to go to a spa. In the 20 black people, there's two Muslim sisters that are here with us, yeah? Cool, lovely, lovely girls. And I speak French. So I've, I've been the translator the whole trip. So that's a quick thing to remember, okay? Thank you. So all the girls are in the changing room and as we leave the changing room, we're walking to the swimming pool bit, yeah? We don't even get to the swimming pool bit and bear in mind, I'm with the two Muslim sisters. They're with me! The wrong person to be with, but they're with me! <laughs> the guy, so some guy stops them. His name is Seb, probably short for Sebastian. He stops them and he goes, oh, you guys can't come in like that. And I'm just looking around like, like, like what? <laughs> so 
So obviously, Sab, she's wearing a hijab and they're wearing modest swimwear. They're wearing swimwear, but it's just modest swimwear, right? And then the guy goes, oh, um, basically, you can't go in like that. So I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. There. So I'm start, I start speaking to him in French directly because I'm really trying to understand. I'm thinking, I know this guy at Mads. So I'm just like, um, I'm speaking to him in French and I'm just like, they're wearing swimwear. Like, it, it might look like it's like leggings on the top, but it's actually swimwear. Like, the material is swimwear. They're not breaking any rules or whatever. And the man's like, oh, yeah, basically, we've got a shop downstairs. They can buy bikinis and swimsuits if they like, but they can't go in dressed like that. I said, oh, I know what's going on here. <laughs> they already had a problem saying, basically, the lifeguard came up to us saying, like, people feel uncomfortable that we're there. So not only are you Islamophobic, people are uncomfortable because 20 black people with pink eye patches have come in and they feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and bear in mind, nobody at the spa felt uncomfortable because we was in that water. Guys, I promise you, we was in the water for like 15 minutes max, yeah? Nobody felt uncomfortable. All the white women were looking at the boys like, oh my God, look at that piece of chocolate. The white women were looking like they were ready to leave their husbands. Nobody felt friend. they were happy to see us. Like the people in the spa were happy to see us. It's the establishment. Yeah. So obviously we're all in the lobby now. The girls are upset because they feel like they've ruined the trip for everyone. And they don't even understand that. But we're backing you the whole way. Like what the hell? There's nothing to feel bad about. Anyways, we're in the lobby, getting ready to leave now. And obviously the owners of the trip, they're rising complaints with like the spa because they're like islamophobic discrimination like this is just wrong did did they not fail to call the police on us a man even said seb a man even said you guys are gonna have a blast at the police station you guys are gonna have so much fun at the police station sorry what are we getting arrested for <laughs> what are we getting arrested for sir but yeah that islamophobic shit that racist shit we wasn't gonna stand for it so we left in case you want to make a mental note, the name of the establishment is called QC Terma Spa. I will put the name of it on the screen for you so you can make sure to know what spa treated them like this. They wanted them to show more skin. That was the issue that they had. They wanted them to go buy bikinis or, you know, one-piece bathing suits from their shop. I'm sorry, what? For who? For why? Why, why? In case you're wondering the for why, Business Insider did talk about it in their article. To me, there's absolutely no excuse. I don't give a crap why. I genuinely don't. But in case you were wondering what their logic may have been, they said that modest swimsuits, sometimes called burkinis, have come under fire in France for years, with some beaches even banning the garments. Muslim women dress modestly for many reasons, but a central one is to respect and deepen their relationship with God, according to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Some in France argue that the swimsuits go against French laws of secularism and the mayor of a community island called Corsica, his name is Vivani, he said in 2016 that they promote, quote, Islamist fundamentalists. So that's the four why. It's some bullshit if you ask me, but that's the four why. In a public statement, Topicals shared that creators on the trip, quote, experienced discrimination, harassment, and were threatened to have law enforcement called on them. The brand also said that experience racism in this magnitude was horrific to say the least, and it prompted them to take their business el elsewhere quick, fast, and in a hurry. They continued, just like any other group of people, we should be able to enjoy the luxuries of travel and finer experiences without the constant fear of hate. As a Black-owned brand, we will not allow this to stop us. We will continue to place Black and Brown creators at the forefront of our branded experiences. Discrimination cannot and will not stop us. Topicals also said that they donated $10,000 to Muslim Black organizations in France to bolster local power and joy within marginalized communities. Great job, Topicals. Might need to make an order. And finally, we are wrapping up What's Up in Makeup today with the best, in my opinion, of the lighthearted stories. It's another commercial. We've been blessed with another fabulous commercial, this time from Sarah V. As you might have known, their collaboration with Michael Sarah during the Super Bowl went very, very well. So they're trying to continue that. 
This time, it is a movie trailer. The movie is not real, obviously, but it is a movie trailer for a movie called The One Under the Sun. And the idea is that Sarah V knows that people skip over ads, so they're hoping if people think that it's a movie trailer that they'll continue to watch it. And it actually has a really good message, and it's only one minute long. Let's check it out. So, how do I look? You are stunning. That is a slay. He just canceled. Okay, he does not deserve he you. He sucked anyway. I just want you to be happy. I am. <laughs> so like, what are you looking for exactly? Nothing crazy. Needs to be with me all the time, but isn't clingy. And can't just be another summer fling. And he needs to protect me always. Oh! I couldn't help it over here. They call me the matchmaker. Come give me a visit sometime. Matchmaker? I met the one! Tell me everything. So you're in love with a bottle of lotion? I know we just met, but you make me feel so taken care of. What you need to do is wear SPF every day. At least she's using protection. There is so much to love about this commercial, the writing, the acting the way that it's shot. I mean, I it just, I love the progression of it, how it kind of leads you in and makes you think that it's a real movie trailer. And then it like eases you in and it's like, oh, it's a commercial. <laughs> and honestly, I also love the message of just making sure to wear your sunscreen in the summer and all year round, but especially in the summer. Melanie Vidal is Cervi's global general manager. She said in a press release, this campaign is more than just laughs and romance. It's about education and empowerment. We want our audience to not only enjoy the journey, but to learn about the daily skincare essentials. And Adam Kornblum, he is the global head of digital marketing, added, by combining people's love of cinema and reality dating show fascination, we were able to tap into a culturally relevant conversation while doubling down on the importance of making daily sunscreen a skincare habit for all. So if you go to the movies anytime between now and the end of June, you may see this as a trailer before your movie. And if you do, you got to come back and tell me what movie you went to go see and what was the reaction of the audience, because I would imagine people would laugh. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, as always, thank you to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you so, so much. And just again, a thank you so much to Nancy and Chelsea and Alexis for reaching out to me and trusting me with your story. It means so much to me. Our chat today will be at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're gonna be hanging out, talking about makeup. Hopefully you can join us if you can. We would love to have you, but if you can't, it is no problem at all. You can always catch it on the replay by going to my channel page and clicking on the live tab. That's where all my live chats are housed. Or if you're subscribed, this is a great time to subscribe, in your subscription feed, they should just be right there. Super, super easy. Or you can go down in the video description down below. There is a link to the What's Up and Makeup live chat podcast. It has all of the live chats that we've done over the past year and a half. So thank you again so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did and you would like to watch another one, especially if this is your first time here at What's Up and Makeup, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you over here to watch, including last week's episode, Top News of What's Up and Makeup's gonna be there. YouTube's going to pick the top one based on your personal viewing history. But if you do have to go, I get it. It is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.